Today I want to flick X-Men First Class, which is a reset, like the Star Trek movie, right? No, it's more a prequel, actually. No, they're sitting in the front of the plane. Took you 10 seconds to tell me I was wrong. That's great. I live for for that. Thanks very much. What do you know about me? Everything. Ben Mankiewicz, Alonzo, Matt Atchity. Alonzo has a last name. It's Duralde. Uh, which <laughs> but one he's going to go by Alonzo. <laughs> like Madonna. With an asterisk, maybe, yeah. A new species is being born. Help me guide it. Shape it. Lead it. This is a prequel to the X-Men series. It's basically how the band first got together, uh, how Charles Xavier became Professor X, how Eric Lenshare became Magneto, yada da da da. Um, It's mostly, but they're not rewriting it. They're just telling you how it all started. Whatever. Uh, It's mostly set during the Cuban Missile Crisis, which, uh, as this movie posits, is actually begun by a former Nazi war criminal mutant mastermind who wants to goad the U.S. and Russia into a nuclear war so that all the humans will be killed and the mutants can take over the Earth. Uh, can Professor X and Magneto stop him? Time for the tour. You have no idea what I'd give to feel normal. You want society to accept you, but you can't even accept yourself. Should we have to hide? Tomorrow, mankind will know that mutants exist. They'll fear us. And that fear will turn to hatred. Not if we stop a war. Not if we risk our lives doing so. We have it in us to be the better man. We already are. You had some problems, uh, Alonzo, with the sort of uh, the look of the movie, which, well, I, which I thought was pretty cool. No, actually. I thought the film looked great. There were some specific choices about the period that uh, that kind of bugged me. Because for me, I hate a movie where it's set in a specific year and they sort of use the whole decade as a template. So like, this is 1962, which is way different than 1966, for instance. So like, mini skirts would not be as high in 62 as they were later in the decade. 62 was really sort of still the 50s. Exactly. Yeah. And so like, you know, when they show you the 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 the, the room full of CIA executives, those guys should all look like Robert McNamara. They should all look like the Kennedy cabinet, those guys with the high end tights and the those, you know, Dean Rusk glasses and stuff. And they don't, they just kind of wobble on a lot of stuff like that. And it's a minor point. I, I really enjoyed the film for the most part, but that was just a little detail that kind of, you know. I, I actually, there was a point that actually kind of brought me out of the movie along those same lines. I really did enjoy this movie. But there was the scene in Vegas where they've got all the big wigs mm-hmm. that go into that room with all of the scantily clad girls, and they're playing Palisades Park. Those guys would not be listening to rock and roll. That really <laughs> bothered me. But that's a minor thing. Like those guys would be listening to like Frank Sinatra. Yeah. Right. Like that's what would be playing there. Like so, Victor Moan. Right. Yeah, like yeah. that'd be the equivalent of taking a bunch of bankers to a party now and be playing speed metal at them. Like, wow. it wouldn't have happened. Well, it was the Hellfire Club, so I, maybe whatever. they were feeling decadent, I don't know. I, you know, but I, I, that's that's a minor thing. Yeah, I are, really did like this movie. I thought it did go. a great okay. job. I really liked it. I thought the action was great. There were yes. some good laughs in it. Um, you know, the cameos weren't particularly intrusive. There were fun little in-jokes in there. Uh, cameos related to the to later the earlier X to the earlier X Men. Right. You know they've they've gone so far. You know as somebody who read the X Men a lot and knows kind of the history of that team and collected those comics, they do take a lot of liberties. So for those people that are out there that are really fans of the X Men, this isn't really the yeah. first class. It's, it's the like, it's the movie narrative version of right. how it, has, it began. Uh, my, I have not read comics because I'm a grown up. Um, and I started as a grown-up. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. I was drinking coffee and reading the Wall Street Journal when I was like four. Yeah, tell us about baseball, Ben. <laughs> okay, so, um, <laughs> uh, so, uh, but my understanding is this: this is a complete retooling of the narrative of the X-Men. For the most part. For the most part. Uh, for, of the narrative that's in the comic books. That's what it I mean. Does, yeah. It does set up the narrative that the movies right, right, right. have been doing. So it kind of, it, it gives you the, the, the first appearance of these characters and what their earlier allegiances were based on what they would necessarily become and later. And from what I've read now about what the, what the movie, what the comic books set up, this one is way better. Uh, depending on how you look at it, I mean, yeah, I, I'd say, you know, the 60s one are a little hokey, but this one does kind of carry on a lot of the themes of the whole children of the atom idea and how, 
you know, you have the mutants that want to work with mankind and use their powers for good, and then the ones who sort of think of themselves as homo superior and want to take over. And, you know, uh, Brian Singer said about the first X-Men that basically he saw Professor X as the Martin Luther King and Magneto as the Malcolm X. You know, the two sort of differing viewpoints of how you handle being a minority. And the movie sets that stuff and in so motion so setting well. it up in the 60s then makes a lot Ab of sense. Yeah, absolutely. And it shows you how the government is willing to exploit these people, but at the same time turn around and try to destroy them at the same in the same breath. And kind know? of, I thought, interesting that Brian Singer directed those first two X-Men and he wrote this one, but didn't. Yeah, he's got, he's got a co-story credit on this one, I think. But yeah, well, he's, in, he's back involved after the last two, which I think he was not involved in. You know, one of the things that I think works about these movies and that they don't shy away from, you know, the comic book has a history of being really much, really a treatise on race relations, uh, especially in the 70s and 80s. And the movies kind of change that up. The first two movies, Brian Singer's movies, almost, you know, especially the second one, kind of almost makes it about, you know, there's this parallel to gay rights. Mm. Um, you know, especially the line in the second one where kid, Iceman's kid, mother says, <laughs> you know, have you ever tried not being a mutant? Uh, this one is a, this one, you know, goes back a little bit more into, into the classic idea of race relations. You know, they, they really play up the idea of Eric Lenscher, Magneto, being a World War, or a, I'm sorry, a Holocaust survivor. Right. And, and, and you really see that that drives his feeling. You know, there's a guy who really is, like, probably wakes up and goes to sleep thinking, never again. Right. And, and you really see that in his character. You know, the other thing about Magneto in this movie is, you know, he's played so well by uh, Michael Fassbender, who, as I'm watching this movie early on, I'm thinking, there's a guy who could be James Bond. You totally. know, they've got yeah, him in like the sure. '60s style. There's like, a scene straight out of Doctor No in the movie. Right. Straight absolutely. out of Doctor No. Yeah. yeah totally. Like, and you, these you guys can... are and 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 the and and both Brian Singer uh, and who directed it? Uh, Matthew Vaughn. Matthew Vaughn. Vaughn. Matthew Vaughn. Take. Both of them are a huge uh, Bond fans. Yeah. It's purely intentional. Yeah. Definitely. I I, I really very, like very this movie. Very much the wetsuit kind of. Yeah. Double absolutely. Seven now, stuff, you know. my only complaint with this movie is I felt like there wasn't a lead character there wasn't a it was hard for me to get behind both professor x and magneto to a certain extent as the hero as like i had a little bit of trouble with that well there's a lot of characters and it, it does feel a little diffuse at times uh, what what bugged me more was i thought there was some real miscasting going on here like i think kevin bacon's a really talented actor i would not go to him for my Nazi war criminal, you know, mutant mastermind role. I just try to take over the world. Yeah, yeah. there's something yeah, a little too white bread about him for that. And then also January Jones, bless her heart, real pretty as Emma Frost. But uh, again, when she's not doing Mad Men, she's not a good actress. Like she was one of the worst Saturday Night Live hosts of recent years. She wasn't good in in that that Liam Neeson uh, unknown, and she's she's terrible in this. So. Uh, I, I wish they had gotten somebody I, I, who would have looked as good and could actually have delivered the lines. I hope it's not just the straight critic in me arguing with you here, but mm -hmm. um, I, I disagree with you. I thought she was, you know, first of all, she barely had to do more than about six seconds at a time Right here. You know, there wasn't exactly a, she didn't have to give a lot. I thought she was pretty cool in this, and I thought about it. And she was awesome, obviously. Well, I, 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 unknown. I, I, uh, I didn't really feel that she was particularly menacing in this. That was the problem I had. But it's, isn't she not supposed to necessarily be menacing? No, she's supposed no, to be Emma menacing. Frost is, Emma Frost is, is, is scary. A, is a oh, scary, really? menacing yeah, character. Yeah, and I thought her lines really fell flat. I thought, well, I was, then I thought it's unclear, like, where she, which direction she's ultimately going to go. But again, I'm not some. <laughs> That's because of her performance, no, I man, think, well. more than anything else. Well, she looked great. <laughs> there she you did go. look good. She did look good. And, yes. But no, really, I mean, there's, you know, Jennifer Lawrence and, and, and Nicholas Holt, you know, a lot of really strong performers. Uh, the movie looks good, I think, in terms of a lot of the, the way they get the, the character stuff, because, you know, Mystique is always hard to pull off. And, you know, we see Hank McCoy becoming the beast which is, you know, that often reads better on paper than it does in film, but, right. you know, they, they, they make it effective. Uh, what I thought at the beginning, I mentioned Star Trek, and we'll get the, our numbers here in a second, is that what I liked best about Star Trek was that the, while there were these special effects, which I thought were actually fairly unimpressive in Star Trek, and they're fine here, this is a character story, and yeah. you really get to see these people, and, and, and it's incredibly well written, and the dialogue is believable. And these, these feel like real people. These sure. feel like real mutants. Um, <laughs> <laughs> the kind of mutants you'd meet on a the, daily the basis. The mutants next door. Right, the mutants you'd meet at Starbucks. Um, my kind of mutants. <laughs> Good mutants, neighbor mutants. Uh, so that's why I Baseball like players. I, I, exactly. Um, 
Uh, so I, that's why I liked it, and I, I could identify with these freaks. Uh, so uh, I liked it. Uh, I liked it uh, way uh, much more than I thought I would. Uh, and I know nothing about the comic books, and don't ever. And you don't to. need to. You don't you need know, to. You, exactly. This is its own separate thing. And though I've seen point, the other yeah. three movies, obviously, uh, it makes no difference whether you have or right. not. I don't think it would even necessarily add to your enjoyment. Maybe a little bit because of the cameos, which are fun. Uh, so anyway, I gave it a uh, nearly an eight. Gave it a seven point nine. I, I dialed down a little just because I think it, it's not as good as the first two. It's definitely better than yeah. uh, Last Stand and, and Origins Wolverine. So uh, I would say a 6.7. Have there been four? There have been, well, if you count the Wolverine movie, yeah, four. So this is the fourth, though. No, this, this, is the, is the fifth. this is the fifth one. It's the fourth one no shit, about the really? whole group. Yeah. I thought there, this was the fourth. X, X Men Origins colon Wolverine. That was. And so there were th there were three before that. Three yeah. before that. I shouldn't have this as a professional call. <laughs> okay, all right. Way to do, do the do research. Uh, I, I did enjoy this movie. I found that there wasn't a hero to really follow and get behind, as you get. You know, they use Wolverine for that in the first four movies, I guess. Uh, and so that if you took. You say a, so. That, <laughs> I, I assure you, there are four. <laughs> uh, so I give this a seven point five. All right, uh, so that pulls our overall grade to seven uh, seven point four. I like the fact that there were essentially two heroes. I got behind both of them, uh, uh, and I loved the uh, angry crusading Jew. Uh, so again, seven point four, a a hearty recommendation for uh, X Men First Class, of course, or you might refer it to as uh, X Men Five. Killing will not bring you peace. Peace was never an option. <laughs>